Worship for Sunday, January the 23rd, 2022. The week of prayer for Christian unity. Brothers and sisters, we are united today with fellow believers in the four corners of the world as we gather to pray for the visible unity of the church. We do this with worship resources prepared by the Middle East Council of Churches. Our texts are inspired by the visit of the Magi to the newborn king, as described in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We saw the star in the east and have come to worship him. We fix our eyes on the star that was seen in the east and allow it to lead us too. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various times and places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. Today's worship is being uh, recorded and saved to YouTube. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber, and I come from St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Cambridge, Ontario. We're glad to have you join us for worship. Our annual meeting will be held virtually on Sunday morning, February the 27th. Please plan to join us as we thank God for our ministry in 2021 and look forward to the ministry that God will accomplish through St. Paul's in 2022. Katrina, our music director, still has her cough, so she recorded today's prelude and postlude from home. Thank you, Katrina. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Glory be to you, Father Almighty, for you have revealed yourself through your creation and have welcomed all people to stand in your presence. We have seen the star of Jesus in our lives, and have come to worship him just as the Magi did. We offer him ourselves today, and we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Unite us with one another as we come from the north and from the south, from the east and from the west, old and young, men and women, to bow down before you and offer you homage, our heavenly King. Amen. The children's time, getting along with brothers and sisters. I'm so very glad that you're here with us this day, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Today's a special day, so special that it's part of a week-long celebration. We're in the middle of the week of prayer for Christian unity. And I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first I have a question for those of you who have a sister or a brother. Do you often fight with your sister or brother? I know that I did an awful lot. Sometimes it seems that we fight most with those who are closest to us and those whom we love the most. And just like we sometimes fight with a brother and sister, it's the same way in God's family. Sometimes different churches in God's family just don't get along. So this special week, we're asking God to help us to get along with other churches and to work together to build the kind of world that God wants. One of the problems in, in getting along with other churches is that they might not speak English. So in the Children's Bulletin today, you can get one at our church website, stpaulscambridge.org. In the Children's Bulletin today are some ways that Christians around the world greet each other and tell about their love of God. In Tanzania, in Africa, the people speak Swahili. Here is how they say, thank you, Jesus. Asante, sana, Yesu. Can you try that with me? Asante, sana, Yesu. In parts of South America, 
Christians greet each other by saying hermanu, which means brother in Spanish, and by saying hermana, which means sister. We're all Jesus' sisters and brothers. And Christians in Hong Kong say ping on to greet each other. Ping on means peace. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Sena Jesu. Hermanu and Hermana, which means brother and sister, and Ping On, peace. In this week of prayer for Christian unity, we ask God to help us get along with our sisters and brothers in other churches. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open, facing up, to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded, head bowed and eyes closed to help you concentrate, or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God and Father of us all, we thank you for the huge family you've given us, a huge family called the Church. Help us to get along with our Christian brothers and sisters and help us to get along with the sisters and brothers in our own households, too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In an email to many of your parents and on our website, stpaulscambridge.org, our children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. <laughs> Revelation of Christ to the nations of the earth. God's promise shines bright in the night as magi follow a star to honor a new king. Strangers from a faraway land, they welcome the long-awaited Messiah of Israel. Please rise as you're able for the gospel reading. A reading from Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah. 
because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. And they opened their treasure chests, presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. The word of the Lord. It will probably come as no surprise to you that I say we're living in a time of polarization, division, and disunity. As an example, it's easy for us Canadians to point to the current investigation into the January 6th U.S. Capitol insurrection just over a year ago. But we have similar demonstrations in Canada, even if they aren't quite as vicious. Frontline healthcare workers and patients seeking care have also been intimidated here in Canada by sometimes violent anti-vaxxers and anti-lockdown advocates. So the federal government recently passed Bill C-3, which makes it an offense punishable by up to 10 years in prison for those found guilty of intimidating health care workers and patients trying to access medical care. Protesters opposed to public health measures such as wearing a mask, adhering to lockdown and vaccine mandates, have increasingly turned to holding intimidating and aggressive protests at the homes of politicians. Premier Doug Ford, Education Minister Stephen Leachy, and Health Minister Christine Elliott have all been visited at home by protesters infuriated by lockdowns, school closures, and vaccine programs, targeting and harassing innocent neighbors and family members who have nothing to do with the government's decision-making. Add to those ugly protests the horrible comments on Facebook and other social media sites, name-calling, snide remarks, and words meant to build up the writer at the expense of the target, words which are in no way intended to seek understanding. We are certainly li living in a divisive and vulgar and disrespectful time. So we need to work toward unity in the midst of diversity. Unity. Think of other words which start the same way. United States, a collection of states unified to seek independence from Great Britain. Union, an organization of workers cooperating for a common purpose, such as seeking improvements to working conditions. Uniform either describing a group which does not vary or dress of a distinctive design worn by members of a particular group and serving as a means of identification. These are all words which point to working together as one, cooperating towards similar goals and having a common identity. We could use more of this kind of unity. We need to work toward unity in the midst of diversity. And that's what the week of prayer for Christian unity is all about. So when our National Bishop Susan Johnson requested that we recognize the week of prayer for Christian unity, I agreed that it would be helpful for us to do so. Since 1908, the week of prayer for Christian unity has been held every year between January the 18th, which is the Feast of the Confession of St. Peter, and January 25th, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, thus marking a division which occurred in the early church between Peter and Paul, a division which needed unification. 
The theme for 2022 is based on the story of the Epiphany. We saw the star in the east and we have come to worship him. This year's materials were prepared by the Middle East Council of Churches in Beirut, Lebanon, and speak to our world's urgent need for solidarity and transformation in the face of political, economic, and social turmoil, including the challenges and injustices highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic. As we join the Christians of the Middle East in the Epiphany journey to Christ, may we become a sign of the unity that God do, desires for all creation. And may we return to our home, our churches, our world, by new ways. The Reverend Dr. Rima Nasrallah from the Middle East Council of Churches shares with us a portion of her address on this year's Epiphany text. You, Bethlehem, are by no means least. Being small, being weak, a little flock, a small grain, a bit of salt, have never been a problem in scripture. On the contrary, this has always been a means for blessing. In our consumerist world, where we are taught to think with the logic of the market, we have come to confuse numbers with success. To think that bigger is better. This has not only been discouraging for us, but we see many of our friends, of our partners in Europe and in other places where secularism has been slimming down numbers. We have seen them stand paralyzed, terrified of the smaller flock. The focus on number has blinded us from focusing on our gifts. And so we told ourselves, these different churches of the Middle East, what we need to do is not focus on the decreasing numbers, but we need to think and focus on the gifts that we bring. The gifts that we bring together, gifts that are unique for each family, each Christian family, and that we can lay down together at the feet of the newborn king, and these gifts together can tell a story. They can tell, they can witness to the royal and divine child who would die for the life of the world. Just like the gifts of the Magi, myrrh, frankincense, and gold can tell about royalty, um, a divinity, the divinity, and suffering. Finally, we have pondered upon one little extra detail in the story. The mention of the new way or the different way. It is a little detail uh, in the story that probably was intended to reveal the evil of Herod and the saving message of God, telling the Magi to return through another way. But somehow we made this hermeneutical jump, maybe unjustifiably, but we were inspired by that uh, sentence. It made us think and ask whether God is maybe calling us to take another way, a new way different from what we have been doing so far, particularly in these COVID times, in crisis times, in changing times, in times when maybe many of us, particularly in the ecumenical circles, are tired of speaking of the same things and doing, doing things the same old way. So not knowing what the answer is, we placed this particular topic in our prayers and we asked the Lord to show us a new way to give us creativity as we seek to walk together in our ecumenical journey, following the light of the star so that we can rejoice with great rejoicing. This, this was our journey with this text. I hope that gathering around it, it will also inspire you along your journey. And the people said, Amen.
The hymn of the day is Christ Be Our Light. It's number 715 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship and on the screen. With faith and confidence, we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, in your love, and responding, hear our prayer. The Magi came from the East to pay homage and to offer special gifts from their cultures and countries. We pray today for all Christian communities around the world in all of their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures, particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. The early years of Jesus' life were marked by violence and massacres at the orders of the despot Herod. We pray for children living in places in the world where violence continues where its results are tangible. Help us to cooperate and witness to your unifying love. Encourage us to stand together in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. After the visit of the Magi, the Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness 
and became refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people in this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us the spirit of welcome to those seeking a safe haven. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. The birth of Jesus was good news for all, gathering people from different traditions and religions in worship of the Holy Child. We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Give us humility and patience to walk with others with respect on their journey. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. The Magi return to their home by a different way. We pray for our churches in this changing world. Help us to find new and creative ways to follow you and to witness to you so that the world may believe. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. One of the Magi's gifts was healing myrrh. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccinations. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become more overwhelmed. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Another of the Magi's gifts was frankincense used to embalm royalty. We thank you for those saints who have made this life better. And we look forward with joy to the day when you will again reunite us with them. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. With faith and confidence, we lift these and all of our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life and unity to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. The sending song is Between Darkness and Light, and it's sung by Inshallah and Friends from Martin Luther University College. It's sung first in Arabic, then in Hebrew, and then in English. The words are, Between darkness and light I will always walk, and wherever I will go I will open the window of light and will plant the seeds of love. Between darkness and light, sung by Inshallah.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.